One of our key lab tests that we use is whole blood histamine, and we find that some of our, of our our mental illness conditions have a lot to do with whether a person has an overload of histamine or a deficiency of histamine in their blood. And uh, what we this is actually a marker for methylation. People who are high histamine tend to be undermethylated and vice versa. People who are low histamine are overmethylators. And this has a dramatic effect on many people. People who are Undermethylated tend to have lower activity of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. And these are very important neurotransmitters, and they're prone to, to depression. They're prone to obsessive compulsive disorder. They're prone to children who have this are prone to autism. So undermethylation can be a really nasty thing for people. Uh, there are other people who, because of genetics, are elevated in histamine, and they have tend to have high levels of dopamine and serotonin and norepinephrine neurotransmitters. And this is really too much of a good thing. And that itself can cause great problems, especially things, uh, symptoms such as um, anxiety, panic, sleeplessness, and in some cases bipolar disorder or even paranoid schizophrenia in severe cases. It's, and we now know that methylation is directly involved in the in this emerging science of epigenetics. And if you have a, a, met, a methylation disorder, it can, it can alter dozens and perhaps hundreds of genes. It, cannot, it can sometimes actually turn some, some genes off that are supposed to be functioning on, and, and it can also silence genes. It can, it can turn on genes that are supposed to be silent. And this can cause all kinds of mischief in the human body. And uh, it's a, I think the, the, the knowledge that's going to come from the continuing massive efforts in research on epigenetics are just going to be wonderful for the world, and it's going to lead to a greater understanding of disease conditions and, and far greater treatments.